Jack White and Love Interruption, the first official single from his first official solo album, Blunderbuss, from April of 2012. I find Jack absolutely fascinating. He really hasn't made any missteps in his career yet. He moves ahead boldly and with confidence, and I like how he continually follows his artistic muse. He goes with things that interest him, and not how it might sell. I hope this guy's around for a long time to come. Coming up in just a sec, a look back at the things we were hearing in 2002. More on the secret history of rock. Coming up. Back to the secret history of rock with Alan Cross. Each episode features a look back at a specific year, you know, just as a way of reminding yourselves of what we were doing and listening to back then. The U.S. was deep in Afghanistan in 2002. They're still there with troops from a lot of other countries. On June 15th, 2002, an asteroid missed us by just 75,000 miles. But then, that September, we were hit by something. It might have been the nucleus of a comet that might have been as wide as 100 meters. But fortunately, it came down in Siberia. This is called the Vitim Event. Interesting. 2002 is when U2 performed at halftime at the Super Bowl. Alice in Chains singer Lane Staley died of a drug overdose. His body lay in a Seattle condo for about two weeks before it was found. And Grant Coxon bailed on Blur, which marked the beginning of the end of that group. Until money brought them back together about a decade later. Other bands beside Alice in Chains and Blur that fell apart in 2002 included Hole, Run DMC, EMF, Space Hog, Bush, and InSync. Some would stay broke up, others would eventually get back together. Bands that got going in 2002? Thornley, the band that came after Big Wreck, The Waking Eyes, good band from Winnipeg, Velvet Revolver, and The Fray. Coldplay had an extraordinarily good year. They showed promise with their debut record Parachutes, but no one really expected them to blow up the way they did with their second album. The song that really did it was based on a simple piano riff that Chris Martin came up with one night while listening to music from Muse, the English band. At first, Coldplay just kind of messed with it because, well, they felt that it really didn't work. And it wasn't much of a priority because they had so many other songs written and because also the record label was pressuring them to finish the damn record and get it out. But the release of the album had to be postponed anyway, which gave Coldplay time to rework this semi-forgotten song a little bit more. Having given it a little rest, things came together much differently and much more quickly. And things worked out well, didn't they? 